Billy here. We're going to continue on with this subject. A lot of your men going their own way, well, they're pouting, and they want, they, they're not going to play anymore because the society's rigged. Some of them have been, have been hit pretty hard, too, though. Some of them have been married and have children, and then the woman decides she wants somebody else, and so she uh, pulls the divorce card, and uh, dude has to start coughing up money, and she calls the shots, and he doesn't have any input on how his kids are raised, and he can only see them when she wants, and she can play all kinds of mean little dirty tricks, and she does what he, she wants, and she and he pays for it. Well, that's not fair, isn't it? It's kind of like uh, the opposite of the law of Pater Familius. <laughs> uh, don't cry to me. I've been through all that. I've, I've, I've you know, for various reasons... <laughs> Uh, but my family isn't in America, it's in Russia. So I guess I'm lucky in one way and I'm not lucky in others. But I'm not here to talk about that. I just have experience. And I've had experience that got me into that. I know why I married a difficult woman. Because of our unwillingness to have a culture that teaches people how to freaking act, you know, around the opposite sex, uh, that teaches people how to act and with manners and, and inside a cultural framework and form work, we've thrown all that away. And people don't know how to act, they don't know what to do, and they revert to savagery. Uh, because of that, and, and, and we've built a, 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 a system with special interest groups that are uh, ideologically driven that see everything as victim and oppressor. That's all they see. Everything is divided into oppressor and victim. You can do that with anything. You can take anything and there's a victim and an oppressor. It's a mindset. It was demonstrated in the Middle Ages, for crying out loud. Don, uh, uh, Cervantes uh, wrote uh, Don Quixote. Uh, the History of Don Quixote de la Mancha. That's a freaking hilarious book. It's difficult, but it's it's funny. It's rich. And one scene, Don Quixote is uh, on his horse, and he's got his kettle on his head, and he's he sees some people, and he wants to be a hero. He wants to be a white knight. He wants to slay oppressors and deliver victims. But he doesn't have any context, so he rides up on these people and says, Tell me, kind sir, art thou the villain, or art thou a victim, that I may know whether to vanquish or deliver thee? Now think about that for a minute. He has to ask people whether they're an oppressor or oppressee, so he knows whether to kill them or to, to save them. You got a lot of white knights around these days that are doing that, only they don't have the courtesy to ask. They let the media tell them you know, who the victims and the oppressors are. They see everything as a victim and an oppressor. You got all these people that have bought into it because it's taught to them in school and even university, and they're so full of themselves, they know everything because they've been to college. And they're against the patriarchy. And so they do things to mitigate racism and patriarchy. And they're being taught by the most racist and patriarchal people in the world. They're the ones that have made the curriculum. They're the ones that design things because it's exploitive. It makes you weak. It atomizes you. I don't remember exactly where it is. There's, there's a story in, in the New Testament where Jesus is talking about something and he really pisses the Pharisees off. He makes them so mad they want to kill him. They grab him and haul him up to this cliff to throw him off of. But they're such in such a rage that they, they lose him. You know, It just turns into a big brawl and he walks out of it. He walks away and they, where'd he go? I thought I had him. No, that was me. What would, what did he say to piss them off so much? Their own scriptures, their own history, where God took care of a woman and fed her during a famine who wasn't even a Jew. She was a, she was a Gentile. He pointed that out and says, God uh, loves and takes care of Gentiles as well. That wasn't a Jewish woman. That was she's the only one too. She's the only one he took care of in that famine, and she was a Gentile. 
That's what pissed them off. They're that racist. Those those Pharisees were that freaking racist. When you say God cares about somebody that's not in your culture, not of your bloodline, and not in your club, they want to kill you. Most racist thing on the planet. And you read Talmud, most American churchgoers don't even know about it. But you don't have to read Talmud to see what the Pharisees are all about. I mean, they didn't write Talmud, but Talmud was taken from their traditions when it was finally committed to paper. You had to pin them down on something after the destruction of the temple. Anyway, it's one of the most racist books you've ever seen. The Goy are made of unclean substance, while they, the Chosen, are clean, no matter what they do. And yet... Who's forming all these organizations to fight racism? Modern Pharisees. I'm not saying Jewish people, although a lot of them are, but Pharisees come in all different forms. Pharisees, I was, I, I, I always thought when I was growing up and hearing little Bible stories and stuff that they were just a bunch of hypocrites. Oh, it's much worse than that. <laughs> it's a religious system. It's a cult, and it still exists to this day of special people who are extreme racist. Racism at the base of it. Anyway, <laughs> they're not only trying to dismantle your culture in the name of racism, but also in the name of misogyny. Everybody's a misogynist and a patriarch, and it's it's got to be dismantled, and it's got to be... See, we have to set against that and make reparations and go way off in the other direction to make things right. There's people that believe that and actually try to do it. They're behind a lot of this stuff. These men go in their own way. You're living in a society that's uh, cockeyed toward benefits for women and the opposite of benefits for men in a family. It's the... Uh, power for women and no power for men. The women are believed, the men aren't believed. The women are automatically given, you know, alimony and child support and all that stuff, no matter what they do, for the most part. And yeah, they're pretty sore about that, but you know. And, and then these guys that can't find a woman because they reject any sort of attention and they don't want to be uh, an object of fascination for somebody. They're trained to think that's creepy when they used to embrace it and cultivate it. But it had to be controlled. And, and plus, you know, there's a lot of men that are psychos too, and I can see why women would be creeped out by that. But you have to have some judgment. But you don't have any judgment, you don't have any backup because your society's been destroyed. What do you do? Oh, we're going our own way. It's not the answer, dude. You need to rebuild your society, or you need to rebuild your culture, and you're not responsible for doing it in the whole country, or the whole world, or even the whole state or county. You need to do it in your world, your circle. You need to educate people. You need to cultivate people. You need to find out ways to elegantly and eloquently explain how things are supposed to work, and cultivate that, and educate people, and educate women, and talk to them. They need it. They want it. They really do. The ones with blue hair and tattoos on their face, eh, they're probably not going to listen to you, but you know, there are a lot of them that will, or a lot of them that are hungry for it. And you need to get good at it, you need to educate yourself, you need to develop some rhetoric and become articulate and be fair and work on it in your own little world, in your own circle. That's your world, that's your responsibility. Don't shirk your responsibility and sit around and cry about it and type on the internet about how shitty women are. Do something about it. Make it better. That's what... That's a good place to stop, isn't it? Okay, that's it for this one. Oh, think about this and see what I missed. Maybe do another one along these lines. Maybe I'll go somewhere else, but I'm making shorts. Enjoy. Uncle Billy signing out.